Now, Brother Howard, you, you good works. You took in abused children. Uh, you were a police officer. You served. But something happened where he said your works weren't acceptable to him. Yes. He says, um, well, when, 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 when I stood before him to plead my case, see, the angels brought me there to plead my case. Because I, all the time I kept asking him, is he going to let me live? I knew that my spirit had been crossed, had crossed the veil. Flesh and blood can't go there. And I knew the only way I could come back, God would have to permit it. Have to permit it. And I kept asking the angels every time. I, I, I still, no matter what I saw, I still was in love with this old piece of clay. And so they brought me there and let me plead. Brought me to the gate. They wouldn't let me. I didn't go in. I came to the gates of the third heaven. And, and they, they told me, I watched 50 saints being perm permitted to enter the gates of heaven. But they didn't let me go in. They said, they, they, they stopped me. The angel stopped me there and says, well, I got to the gate. And he says, if you go in, you can't come out. You got to stay till he brings you back. I said, if I can't come out then that means my phys physical life is over. And you told me I could ask him. Angel said, you can ask him, but you stand outside this gate and ask him. And so I did. I came and I, 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 I was allowed to plead my case. So and I was, you, uh, my, I was, I was pleading to God I couldn't see, but I knew it was total silence while I pled my case. I was telling him, all, I reminded him of all my good works. I told him about all the things that I'd done, all the things. That, that's what I was basing on, on my, my good work. I told him about all of that. <clears throat> and when, when I, he was, never said a word till I finished. When I finished, then he answered me in a voice that sounded like thunder. Wasn't anything like the voice that Satan had used on him. He says, he started, I'm going to try to quote verbatim exactly what he says. Your faith is dead. Your works are in vain. The life that you lived and offered to me as a life of Christian service is an abomination that I rejected in the Pharisee. What made you think I would accept it from a Laodicean type Christian? In fact, untold millions are living the same kind of life, same kind of life that you lived. And they stand in danger of my everlasting wrath. Unquote the living God. I couldn't believe he was talking to me. I'm a preacher. I'm a teacher. I just told him about all my good works. What I'd done, you know. And, and, and I said, no, Lord, don't you wait. You don't understand. He said, you didn't do those works for me. You did them for a false God. I said, Lord, I worked for you. I called you Lord every day. Yes, you did, but you never made me Lord. What a difference. To call him Lord gives him a title. To make him Lord promotes him to ruler of life. Who is your Lord? But Lord, I was serving you. No, you wasn't. You served a false god. Then he named him. Satan's number one selling false god. S-E-L-F. Instantly. I knew everything he said was true. Had he reached down and picked me up and dropped me in hell, I would have said amen. But I couldn't move. I'm laying on my face spirit in the spirit. I couldn't move. I couldn't move. They came and angels came and took me away. They took me out and let me regain my composure and brought me back and let me plead the second time. Second time, I never opened my mouth. Then he began to talk to me in a compassionate tone as he said to me, Suddenly I realized this is my father and I hurt him. He was hurting for me. The God that created all of this was hurting for me. The smallest insignificant piece of flesh that he had, he was hurting for me. Nothing mattered now. I didn't ask him for my life. I didn't ask him for anything else. But when this life meant nothing, he gave it back. Sent me back to do what I'd done. Pay, give me a five-point message for the church and give me place two restrictions on it. Restriction one was that I was not to ask anybody to hear this because he was sending me to his church. I didn't know what, it, what was his church, but he knew which one was his church. He was sending me to his church. 
All I had to do was go where I was asked. When I get an invitation, put it down. Get to it when I can. And if I'm not supposed to go there, he'd close the door. But if he opened the door, no man would close it. And that's the way it's been ever since. The five-point message he gave me, the point one, this is number one point. This is the Laodicean church age in which we live today. This is the Laodicean church age where the overwhelming majority of so-called Christians are just that, so-called. They're mouth professors and not heart possessors. And unless they wake up, he's going to spew them out of his mouth. He promised to do that, you see. But he gave them a chance. In his word, he gave them a chance. If they wake up, if they wake up. Point number two, your adversary is a personal and powerful adversary, Satan the devil. He is, or he is anointed. Point number three, if you ever, ever expect to have any of God's power manifest in your life, you're going to have to live the life. Not talk it, you got to walk it. And point number four, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. What he's saying there, keep your eye on the eastern sky because your redemption draweth nigh because we have reached the days of Noah once again. And we look in history and in the Bible to see how it was in the days of Noah. And we see that mankind had but two priorities, wealth and pleasure, wealth and pleasure, wealth and pleasure. Everything else is secondary. That's where it was in the days of Noah. And he said it was going to be that day that way again. And we have reached that stage. Point number five. Now, this is one that really, the main one, the one that he sent me back for. And a lot of people can't comprehend this. What he said was, let me go back to Matthew Matthew, in writing, was quoting John the Baptist when he said this in chapter, number, chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. He said, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with Holy Ghost and with fire whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The baptism of the Holy Ghost, so to speak, is going to come with fire. He's going to burn up the chaff in the, in the Christian. So a lot of people think that uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is evidence speaking in, uh, in tongues. Well, it, it might be. But by the same token, the real evidence is the fire burning the chaff out of the individual. And that's going to take tribulation. How would you summarize that fifth point then? The fifth point is the, the baptism. baptism of the Holy Spirit. True baptism of the Holy Spirit. We got some people that come to church and talk in tongues all day and go to the honky tonk first thing Monday morning. You know who they are. You know who they are. But the fire is coming. The true baptism of the Holy Spirit is going to bring fire in the, the chain for the life of the individual. That's your five points for the church. And that was the message the Lord gave to you. Right, to come right. Back and share. The five-point message to the church. And the fun, fun, I didn't know where the church was because everything it calls itself is church is not a church. Brother Howard, you talked about you saw a certain amount of people die and enter heaven. But yes, at the same time, how many, what was it the Lord showed you about the people that didn't make heaven? 97% didn't make it. 2,000, they showed me... His harvest for 15 minutes span of time. 15 minutes span of time. They occurred August 3rd, 1979. 
from where the paramedic judged my body to be dead until it arrived at the hospital. In that 15 minutes, 50, I, I was allowed to see 50 saints that go into heaven. That was the sum total of his harvest on the planet Earth for 15 minutes span of time. In that same 15 minutes, 1,900 and, and, and uh, more people died. 950 more died. Only 50 out of 2,000 made it, 2.5%. That's that dovetails with just exactly what he said in Matthew 7. For many will say to me in that day, but Lord, Lord, have we not preached in your name? Have we done many marvelous works in your name? In your name have we done all this work? And he will say, depart from me, and I will knew you, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. You were never saved. Not that you were saved one day and turned you back. You, I never knew you. You were never mine. Two and a half percent. Now, they let me see that because on August 3rd, 1979, that was the condition of the planet Earth. Had that been the day the trumpet would have blown so loud it would wake the dead, he would have got two and a half percent of the population of the world. Two and a half percent. He, he, tour, he allowed me to tour the second heaven, which is Satan's kingdom. He allowed me to tour the whole kingdom and see the different spirits that, that, that it has. And uh, that was the first thing because I was weak. I was weak in, in that training. I, uh, you know, sometimes I remember in the seminary, we had professors come and tell us one time teaching how to go to heaven was like climbing the mountains. They got somebody come up that side, somebody up this side, somebody up this. But when they get there, they're all at the top. Well, that, right now, that's a doctrine that's very popular in the Christian church. You, be, you know, you're a good old boy. You're going to make it and all that stuff. God loves you. Don't worry about it. Hey, we got the devil under his feet, and he's laughing all the way to the bank.